Good afternoon, everybody. It's day 34 of the 40 day homestead challenge, really just about a week left to go. We are out here hoping to dodge the raindrops. It has been pouring down rain here a lot of today. And naturally that limits what we can get done out here on the homestead and specifically in the garden. So Melinda and I were talking and we said, you know, it'd be kind of cool if we shared some of our favorite homestead hacks, the things that we learned when we moved from the suburbs out here to the country, to the homestead that have made our lives a whole lot easier. So we want to share with you our five favorite homestead hacks today. When we lived in the suburbs, I always wanted to have a compost pile. Uh, it was just something that was really attractive to me. I wanted to be able to take food scraps and other things and break them down and make for good soil. So I knew the importance and the value of it, but what I didn't really have was good space to do it. So we bought one of those little uh, black composting machines. You've probably seen them, they're the plastic kinds. Look, and if you've got one of those, there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem that I had with it was it wouldn't scale to a size out here on the homestead. So what we did when we first moved in is we built two compost bays. These are probably one of the things that I enjoyed building the most. I dropped some posts in, left this open, and really this just came about because I had that aha moment. We were talking to a friend out at their house and they were just throwing their food scraps and things into a pit in the ground. And I said, what is that? He said, it's our compost pile. And that's where it kind of dawned on me. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to look attractive. It just has to be functional. So we put these two compost bays in right here. We throw food scraps in. We, uh, we put chicken poop in. As a matter of fact, you can see right here that I even designed it so that the door for the chick moor that one of, some of our chicks live in actually just opens up right into it. And that is an awesome hack. All right, our next homestead hack involves something very simple. Um, we love our bird feeders. I love the bird feeders. I like to watch the birds in the morning and it's right outside of our kitchen so when I'm washing dishes I can watch them. We do have the squirrel resistant bird feeders. This one is not but this one is. We have squirrels. We have trees and squirrels all over. A simple um, homestead hack that we like to do and it's good in any weather even if it gets wet. Take a little olive oil, put it on a cloth or a paper towel and just olive oil your pole. The squirrels will not be able, our squirrels anyway, they, they won't get up, they won't be able to get up there because they climb up, they don't jump, they climb up here and um, they'll slide down. This last, I don't know, two or three months, whenever we see a squirrel out here again, one of the kids gets a little oil on a, um, a little olive oil on a paper towel or a cloth comes and does it and we're good for another few months. Simple, quick, inexpensive, but then our birds stay happy and our squirrels are fat enough on the acorns we have around. Before John and I talk about the next homestead hack, I was just checking out the garden. We got some rain. I was looking for any um, little eggs on our squash leaves and I found a little guy. He's not a squash bug. I'm not sure what he is. Let's take a look. There he is. I am gonna have to go look him up, see if he's beneficial or detrimental and act accordingly. So for my next hack, it's this awesome way of being able to feed chickens. You may, if, if you've contemplated getting chickens, you may think about getting a water, you may think about getting a feeder, and you think, hey, do we keep it clean? Is it messy? What, what does it look like? Well, we tried a lot of different things. We had a terracotta pot that had a tray, uh, and we just flipped the terracotta pot into the tray, and then we put the food around on the outside, and that was great when we just had a few chickens. But when we got more, it got to be a mess and then it would rain on it and it would smell and it would just get moldy and it was bad. So we came up with a really cool solution. Now we didn't come up with this on our own. We got this from, uh, from some others out there, but this is definitely a homestead hack worth trying. So what we did was we took a large four inch PVC pipe with a cap that we could remove just like that. and then we scoop the food right in. It's an awesome way to use gravity. It's called a gravity feeder. It uses gravity to let the food fall down. It mostly keeps it dry but just as an added measure of protection, I put just a little bit of roofing right over top of where 
the gravity feeder lives or where it stays and it keeps things nice and dry. We don't have to worry about their food getting wet. Definitely a fun homestead hack. So for our next homestead hack, we are going to talk about simple um, garden storage in and around your garden. One thing you can use, we happen to have an old, an old mailbox from our house that we are going to use. John's going to dig it and put it right here beside the garden, not for mail delivery, but the inside of the garden stays dry no matter, I mean the inside of the mailbox stays dry no matter your conditions. Um, whether it's raining or storming outside, you can store things like um, simple gardening tools, a little hand shovel or trowel, as well as gloves. Maybe even your gardening notebook could go in there so you know what seeds are supposed to be doing what when and you could do some recording. Great, simple way to get a little bit of storage right beside your garden. And this is really easy to do. Again, we just happen to have this nearby because we replaced our mailbox, but you can find these. You can find these at reuse stores and uh, discount places. But look, all you have to do is dig a hole, stick it in the ground nearby where you want it to be. You don't have to worry about setting it in concrete or anything. Just put this in and they get to work. All right, if you are on a homestead, you are very familiar with the bugs that are around where you live. We've talked a lot about bugs. We've talked about fire ants, squash bugs, different bugs, different things that impact. Well, a bug nobody likes to mention or talk about is a cockroach. And we live in a house that's older where there were several barns on the property and things like that. And we know they're around. Um, it's inevitable that they're around. So we are fine with the cockroaches living out there in our yard away from us, but not so much in our house. One way we prevent them from coming in is just mixing up a simple um, kid safe, pet safe, home spray. This is a little bit of salt water, about a half cup of salt water. I think I doubled it actually. This is about a cup of salt water. Um, it is 20 drops of peppermint essential oil and 10 drops of cypress oil. The cypress and the peppermint, the roaches hate the smell of it. So we just spray it on the outside so they won't come in and then I take it right on in and spray it around the baseboards of the kitchen so I don't have to find any. When I mix ours, um, when I run out, which takes a while to run out, but when I do, I mix it up. We use a glass spray bottle. It's very simple handheld. It's one of my favorites. I do have bought the plastic ones before. This sprayer and nozzle it works so much better. I'll try and get John to link to it. Um, so if you're interested in it, you can get it too. This is a bonus hack. So we had some lettuce that was all wilted and we want to have a salad tonight. And this is just about the only lettuce we've got. We don't have any fresh lettuce. So what we did is we took ice and water and we put it, we put, we made ice water and then we we peeled all the lettuce leaves off and dropped them in there and they should revive enough for us to have a good um, tasting and looking salad tonight. And then any leftover leaves I'm sure we can probably bag up and use again. We hope you really like those homestead hacks, they're really cool. Before we break for today, um, as I told you, it's been raining a lot today, uh, about I guess three days ago now. Our big 275 gallon water cube, and you know we love to talk about that, we're really proud of it, it completely went dry. We used all of it in the garden. So every time it rains, we've been on the listen out and the lookout for how much more water is in the water cube. So I thought I'd walk up here real quick and let's take a look. So here you can see it. Water level's about right here, not quite halfway up. And of course, that's amazing because really just two days ago, it was bone dry in there. So nice to know that it doesn't take long to be able to fill this guy back up. Well, there you have it. Those are five simple homestead hacks that uh, we've used here. Uh, like we said at the beginning, when we moved out here to our, uh, to our homestead out into the country from suburbia, you know, there were just things we just didn't know and we had to figure out quickly. We've been very blessed to be able to get plugged into a lot of different communities where we got these great suggestions. But it's helped make our lives a little bit easier and hey look, hopefully it makes your life a little bit easier. Yep, I hope that you are always thinking about your own quick, simple, cheap solutions to everyday problems. Uh, wait till the problem presents itself and then you can figure out your own homestead hack for it if none of ours match your problem. So we want to hear from you. Do you have some awesome hacks maybe that you've tried or some things you've wondered about? If so, leave it in the comments down below. You can also hit us up on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, any of those. We'd love to hear from you. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow for the next day in the 40 Day Homestead Challenge.